this isn't really a robbery. I mean, he's been ripping me off on overtime for years. If anything, I'm just getting my back pay. He's at a party with regional manager, so he's not even home. I just have to grab that stupid portable safe he goes on about and bail. There has to be something valuable in there. I can't believe I'm doing this. Should have brought a light. Oh, I should use that flashlight. Why is this house so bare? It doesn't even look lived in. I should read those directions. We've cleaned all of the shower walls and the shower door and the runners, and now it's time to clean the top. You notice we haven't rinsed yet. This is just a big bubbly mess, all the walls and everything, but we're only going to rinse one time, and that's after we finish the tub. It saves a lot of time. So let's grab for our comet, and we're going to apply a little comet to the tub. You know how to do that. We're real sparing with it. We don't want to want to use much. It's hard to rinse away, and especially if you get it outside the rim of the tub itself. Keep it in the bowl of the tub. We cleaned all. of the show. Shower wall. I can do the Hamilton rap. How does a bastard? 
orphaned son of a whore. And a Scotsman dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean, impoverished and impoverished and squalor. Grow up to be a hero and a scholar. The ten dollar founding father without a father got a lot farther by working a lot harder by being a self starter by working a lot harder by fourteen. They placed him in charge of a trading charter. Then every day the slaves were being charted and parted away across the waves. He struggled and kept his guard up inside. He was hoping for someone to be a part of. The brother was ready to beg, steal, borrow, or barter. Then a hurricane came and devastation rang. The man saw his future drip, dripping down the drain. Put a pencil to his temple, connected it to his brain. Then he wrote his first refrain, a testament to his pain. Well, the word got around, they said, this kid is insane, man. Took up a collection just to get him to the mainland. Get your education, don't forget from whence you came. And the world's gonna know your name. What's your name, man? Faith, family, country. These are the three pillars this great city stands on. And to keep these pillars strong, we must remain tough on crime. And if you reelect me as your district attorney, these pillars will remain stronger than ever. Vote for me, Vincent Johnson, as your district attorney. There's a cup by my car, oh thank god. And number one in our list of top 10 worst legal defenses comes the Red Ring Murderer. For those of you too young to remember the Red Ring Murderer, from July of 1993 to January of 1994, this person was on an unaliving spree and the MO was that they would, let's just say, take apart their victims and then leave the remnants in a bathtub. And they got their name from the Red Ring that would be left behind after all the evidence was collected. And then one night when an officer was checking on an unattended vehicle, 24-year-old Kelly Reardon came running out of an unattended house, which she claimed the Red Ring murderer was in. However, upon examining the house, no one was inside. So, of course, she said the murderer must have slipped away while she was talking to the officer. So, of course, as one would, the officer asked why she was in the house. After a series of non-answers, she finally came out and said that she was there to rob her boss. And when the officer asked how she expected to find her boss's things in a vacant home, she claimed that she took a wrong turn and accidentally went to the wrong house. Very convenient. So needless to say, she was asked to take a ride downtown for some questioning. And this isn't even the craziest part. 
Fast forward to her jury trial, and she actually claimed that the real Red Ring murderer was District Attorney Vincent Johnson, aka the prosecutor on her case. Now, legal experts agree this was likely a move on Reardon's part to get Johnson and his 98% conviction rate recused from the trial. And uh, needless to say, that did not work. And even more bafflingly, she maintained this story even four years later, on the day she was executed by the state, or as I like to call it, the finding out phase. The moral of this story, don't kill anyone, kids. Y'all have a good one. Thank you.